Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna demonstrate how quick and easy is to make a cape um, for our character using a Marvelous Designer. So here I am in Marvelous Designer and I have uh, exported a, a combined and decimated version of my model. So uh, make sure that the scale is right. So because um, you want to simulate something that it's uh, the size of a real uh, person. So I just start with the uh, with the square, with a rectangle, and um, I'm just drawing a simple shape. And what I'm gonna do uh, from now, I'm just basically uh, my strategy is gonna be to uh, move uh, only a couple of points. Uh, on the shoulder of my character and um, and try to adapt uh, the shape of the cape uh, to make it look um, interesting or um, realistic or stylized uh, depending on what you want to do so um, I'm using I'm placing a couple of pins and I'm moving uh, those pins uh, basically uh, those pins will stay in in place uh, where the simulation is uh, is running. Uh, so, placing the pins roughly uh, around uh, the the color of the costume, and um, as you can see, it's a little bit baggy at the moment uh, on the bag, but on the back. But um, obviously, that's gonna uh, that's gonna change. So. Um, once I place uh, the pins, I, I basically just uh, click and drag a little bit and see what I get as a as a first mesh, as a first result. And obviously, at the moment, it doesn't look very good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the uh, uh, the point mode and. Um, I'm just gonna move the vertices or the points uh, of my uh, cape to make it look um, a little bit. Um, basically, what I want to do, I'm going to uh, reduce uh, the um, uh, the length uh, there um, and see if that looks better. And uh, I mean, it's a little less uh, saggy, obviously, but. Um, doesn't really look uh, uh, big enough or l large enough so um, what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna select uh, back those points and move them um, one thing to notice our marvelous design does have uh, the possibility to work with symmetry um, I just didn't bother to use it because this is such a a simple object so and um, basically what I'm gonna do now I'm, I'm selecting the uh, curve tool and I'm clicking and dragging uh, along a couple of lines to make them uh, a little bit curve and see if they work a little bit better and they kinda do but uh, uh, on the back of the neck you can see it's still uh, quite um, baggy so, at first I'm going to try to pull uh, those uh, pins a little bit further so that uh, that bagginess is going to stay, uh, it's going to reduce the bagginess uh, on the back of the neck. Um, but uh, I think like the right solution is to um, just uh, change the actual shape of uh, the, the garment. Um, or because this is not uh, ha the correct shape um, I haven't uh, before starting doing this I haven't actually done any research whatsoever on uh, what kind of shape a cape should have I'm just going to um, try a bunch of things just to experiment a little bit and um, so I'm just pushing and pulling um, it starts to look okay, but uh, obviously it needs some more work. So um, 
uh, what I'm doing now, I'm going to go into display and I'm going to uh, activate the wind controller. So when you turn it on, uh, it simulate wind. So this will help uh, give the cape some more uh, interesting shape. And by pressing spa space bar, you can uh, start and stop the simulation at any time. So uh, every time you see an interesting shape, you could uh, just push space bar and freeze the simulation in that particular uh, position. So if you're happy with the current uh, uh, state of the or of your cloth, you can just export that. But also here, I'm changing uh, the properties of the cloth. I I change from triangles to quads, and I reduce the particle distance from 20 to 10. Um, in this way, um, the simulation is taking a little bit more time. It's a little bit heavier, but uh, basically, what the particle distance does is to make uh, smaller polygons. So uh, you're gonna have a denser mesh. That's why uh, the simulation is taking longer. Um, you can rotate and move around the the wind, so you can get uh, uh, interesting shapes uh, all over. It, also, the wind has uh, parameter like uh, um, frequency and turbulence and things like that, that you can play with. Uh, but um, um, I think what I actually want at this point is to kind of lock um, uh, the cape uh, around the shoulder because I don't really like the fact that uh, it's flying away uh, completely. Basically, it's, it's attached only on two, on two points at the moment. So also, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to insert a point... Um, uh, an extra an extra point uh, there and then I'm going to create uh, a little bit of padding uh, where uh, the shoulder are gonna bend so um, for doing this first I bring back the uh, particle because um, it's a little bit heavy to work with I will increase them later and now I'm moving those vertices and um, basically to give my shoulder a little bit more room so and then I'm also going to uh, uh, shorten the distance of the neck because now I have uh, this uh, a little bit nicer uh, shape and also with the curve tool I'm just gonna add a little bit of curvature to those uh, edges so they're not so uh, straight and Oops, I think here I um, I need to re reposition the uh, the pins. Um, they probably uh, disappeared when I uh, changed the shape, so uh, I'm just gonna do that real quick. So go here and add pin box, and you can see you can click and drag um, on the vertices, and it will create new pins. So and now again with the just the move tool you just move them you need to be careful to not move them inside uh, the avatar otherwise it's going to be a little bit difficult to um, to uh, grab them um, also here I'm having a little bit of a hard time to uh, click and drag them around uh, but um, uh, so I place them uh, there again al uh, around the uh, the neck area uh, where the color of the costume is and again I'm not too concerned at this point uh, where exactly I'm gonna place these uh, because uh, once I'm gonna export the cape I'm gonna adjust that area in ZBrush anyway so um, so when I, when I uh, simulate now I have a little bit better uh, shape along the shoulders but um, uh, they still when when I apply the wind they still move away a little bit uh, so um, you can't really see it uh, at this moment but um, if I start playing around a little bit with the direction of the wind um, they will start um, uh, falling uh, 
on the side or uh, behind the neck uh, again so at the moment the wind is pointing basically uh, in front uh, straight uh, from the character uh, but uh, if you want to make like a little bit more um, dynamic shape for your for your cape then you might want to want to change the direction and uh, and when that happens basically uh, um, the the shoulder uh, still gonna move out a little bit so um, as you can see I keep uh, grabbing them and pushing them back uh, but because of the wind um, and the size of the cape uh, they they basically uh, they keep moving away so um, one thing that I can do uh, to keep exactly um, the uh, the shoulder in place uh, I could use trackers and I'm gonna show that in a, a few seconds so um, basically what the tracker does is uh, it take it takes a specific point and it basically sticked it to uh, the avatar uh, the difference with the pins is that the pins are uh, in space while the trackers are attached to the avatar so for example if the avatar is moving um, the pins are gonna follow the avatar nicely uh, sorry the uh, the trace the trackers are gonna follow the avatar nicely while the pins uh, basically stay uh, in place so um, before doing that I'm trying once more to adjust the shape of the shoulder uh, to have a little bit of better uh, curvature um, but again they they look a little bit nice it looks a little bit nicer this way but um, if I want to move uh, I think I'm gonna have to use the tracker uh, so as you can see uh, I'm trying to figure out here what uh, what to do and then I think I decided right now to use a tracker track on avatar um, so uh, from the interface uh, that's the icon tracks on avatar uh, you basically click first on your garment and then you click on the avatar when you want it to track and um, you simulate and basically now I have a point there so now I'm manually moving um, maybe I should turn off the wind now I'm manu ma uh, manually moving this uh, point the other shoulder there and then another uh, tracker uh, so I can just uh, like that so I can just have two points that I'm gonna, gonna keep my cape uh, stick there on the shoulder um, so even if I apply uh, the simulation with the wind, the shoulder are not gonna the shoulders are not gonna fall over anymore. Um, so as you can see now, play on, and it looks much nicer. The uh, the shoulders are staying in place. So and um, um, now basically what it's left to do is to uh, either uh, adjust a little bit more the shape especially on the bottom because um, it's still to me at this point uh, it looks nicer than before but it's still a little bit too straight um, so maybe adding a little bit of uh, curvature will improve um, the visual and um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do and um, and uh, this is um, basically there are no specific rules when it comes for this uh, fictional fictional uh, element uh, I mean fictional character uh, elements like capes do exist uh, but um, the design of this uh, it's not based on an existing cape I'm just basically uh, pushing and pulling my shape to uh, make it look interesting based on uh, my uh, my taste my preference uh, at this moment I don't have any um, specific design in mind for this so 
it's kind of like a trial and error and it's also one of the fun part of uh, Marvel's designer you just uh, play around with it and simulate and see uh, what happens so again with the curve tool I'm just gonna make it um, much more uh, curved uh, at the bottom so when I simulate I get a little bit more interesting shape uh, in my opinion and then basically um, I just need to simulate for a while and um, once I finally get the uh, the shape that I want I uh, stop the simulation and I export the cape um, as an OBJ so I can import it back in ZBrush so these are the options uh, make sure that uh, it's not thick but it's thin because I'm, I'm gonna add the thickness in ZBrush also I don't need the avatar and make sure that uh, unify coordinates are ch is checked um, and then I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna bring back that to ZBrush so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do now uh, it's very simple and again this is not the character now is not posed yet so uh, this is just a quick demonstration on how I made the cape but I'm gonna have to go back uh, into the marvelous designer once I do the posing and re-simulate with the uh, obviously after the pose um, but uh, just to show you how easy uh, quick and easy it is to do this so here I'm just subdividing the mesh um, it's important to uh, set marvelous designer to quad so it doesn't uh, when you subdivide your mesh it doesn't generate weird uh, pinches or stuff like that so it's gonna be nice and smooth so in Z Modeler, basically I'm doing the same thing as you've seen me doing in the previous video. I'm just going to extrude some uh, thickness of the cape a little bit. Um, something like that should be maybe a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to find the thickness that is going to look nice uh, once it's subdivided. And then uh, basically just... Um, I'm gonna. I'm not really worried about uh, this at this moment uh, of the attachment point yet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just uh, zoom in and um, I'm just gonna zoom in here on the edge loop, and um, with the Z modeler, I'm just gonna uh, insert a full edge loop, and I'm gonna put one near one border. And I'm gonna put another one near the other border again. Uh, you see me doing this over and over in the previous video. And so when I subdivide it, I should get some nice uh, edges. Yeah. So it looks very nice. And also, I really like the uh, slight curve uh, on the corner there. And then there's a little uh, overlapping there of the polygons. You just go and select the uh, uh, move topological and i um, just going to push it out a little bit um, so that doesn't uh, doesn't create problem it doesn't uh, overlap with the underlying uh, geometry you can see it's very easy just push push and pull um, that um, move topological is perfect for this kind of operation so you can see when i subdivide it uh, it looks really nice and um, uh, one last thing I'm going to demonstrate. Again, this is temporary. Uh, I'm not. I'm gonna do it all over again once I do the pose of my character. Um, but just to demonstrate what I'm gonna, what I, I can do very easily. I'm just gonna click and drag here in this corner, and I'm gonna uh, put them inside the. Uh, um, make them go a little bit inside of the collar of the costume here there and like that something very simple and um, also what I could do uh, I could add uh, well I was still adjusting the shape on the back there a little bit and um, like that and uh, what I could do and I definitely will do that uh, more once I do the final um, the post uh, version um, you can add definitely more uh, detail in the folds where 
uh, it's lacking because the simulation is good for the biggest folds but when it comes to the tiniest tiny ones uh, you rather uh, you definitely want to do this in ZBrush and sculpt them manually because um, simulating those tiny tiny folds is going to be um, in incredibly heavy on your computer and it's really not worth it um, um, you just want to have usually I use Marvelous Designer just to block out um, the overall shape of my clothing and then uh, in ZBrush I do the fine details and all this stuff so uh, again here I'm just adjusting the shape a little bit better and um, what I can do uh, I can um, I can go to uh, let's see I'm just taking a look here how it looks uh, it looks pretty good um, so it looks actually pretty good if you if you imagine like the character uh, is flying uh, rather than doing like a pose while it's standing this could work um, but uh, what I wanted to demonstrate uh, real quick is using the dem standard brush I can just go and add a little bit more detail um, when it's needed and again I'm gonna do that extensively uh, once I do the final uh, pose and the final simulation of the cape on the pose uh, this is just a quick demonstration you can just put a little bit more you know a few folds here and there to give the idea that it's tackled uh, there um, inside the uh, uh, the collar of the costume there um, I've always kind of uh, I've never really put too much attention on how these capes are attached uh, in the real costumes um, so um, I don't think it's that important this is not supposed to be particularly realistic it's a stylization so um, I think that looks uh, more than enough uh, in terms of believability um, and yeah so basically imagine that this was your uh, final uh, pose which is, again this is not but if this was your pose you would just uh, keep uh, pushing and pulling a little bit to adjust a little bit better the shape uh, in the in the places where the cape is supposed to be uh, a little bit more attached to uh, the body um, but uh, you don't have to uh, go crazy about it so yeah um, this is a very quick uh, demonstration on uh, what you can do um, with uh, Marvel's designer and to create this very very simple cape shape uh, again this is just a uh, quick demo I'm gonna do that again uh, once I have the final pose model and uh, obviously I'm gonna put more details in it and uh, it's gonna look better than but uh, you know this is uh, easy to follow uh, you can go back I didn't I, you know this 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 video was not intended to be like a in-depth uh, tutorial how to use Marvel's designer I just wanted to show you uh, a couple of really a couple of tools that I used in Marvelous Designer to create this cape um, I'm no way near uh, uh, expert level in Marvelous Designer I don't know this, uh, the software very much I use it uh, occasionally to block out uh, shapes uh, but um, uh, that's pretty much it uh, you can definitely find um, much better uh, tutorial on Marvelous Designer here on YouTube or um, on search on Google and, um, and yeah that's pretty much it um, as you can see if the character was in a flying pose uh, this could probably work uh, fine um, so uh, yeah um, in the next video I will basically uh, show you how uh, to pose uh, this character and uh, also I'm gonna have to do some retopology of uh, the clothes because at the moment um, some of the pieces of the costumes are really really high poly um, 
that's uh, not really good. Uh, so for posing the character, I'm going to need to do a retopology. So I'm going to do that in the next video. And so I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick view on how to quick and easy create a cape uh, in Marvelous Designer. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching the full video. If you want, you can support me on Patreon, subscribe to my channel, and make sure to watch my latest video and other videos in my playlist. See you the next time.